This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with mindfulness teacher Kelly Hanlon McCormick. And today is episode number 253, What Community Looks Like. My intention for this conversation is that we all think about community a little differently and that we let community be what we want and need our community to be. I think we have pretty fixed ideas about community, what that entails and what it quote unquote should be. And I want to challenge the norms and the paradigms that we've boxed ourselves in with and let this be way bigger and wider than, well, just being a social butterfly. Welcome in. It's the Transforming Anxiety Podcast, episode number 253, What Community Looks Like. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there. Welcome in today. Happy spring and almost April. Hopefully that means we have some of those good Midwestern storms coming our way in the next few weeks. God, I love those. Where are my Midwesterners? <laughs> yeah. I used to have this house in the city and it was really old, but it had this awesome screened in porch and it was perfect for stormy nights. And um, when I was a kid growing up, we had this huge covered patio out back, which was also totally ideal for storm watching. That's where I learned about that, of course. My dad and I would just sit out there watching the storms. Love it. Okay, that was random. We're going to talk about what community looks like today. This is something I've been thinking on for a while. This is something I personally practice with often. Because as somebody who's like, I don't know, an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert or something like that, it's something I feel like I want and need to practice with regularly. So it's time to share this one with you. Here we are. Let's get into it. I think that a lot of us believe community is being really extroverted, being really social, going out, you know that it means we need to be surrounded by a lot of people often. And pretty much wherever you go, whatever you practice, it seems like there's an element of community in it. Like it's pushed on us that there should be an element of community inherent in whatever we're up to. Like in school, we're encouraged to work in groups and to play team sports, right? Social gatherings and crowds are touted as good and there's a real sense of the more the merrier, right? Being the done thing. Even in like meditation and yoga and fitness and recovery. And if someone is struggling or planning something big or with work or in neighborhoods or with activities and, ev and events, there's an expected sense of community that comes with the territory. And listen, I'm not anti-community at all. Community is a beautiful thing. And I know it can also be a tricky thing. Like for some of us, community implies a lot of people, which means our social battery is going to get drained fast and we're going to feel depleted, exhausted, spent. So community sounds nice and it comes with the pressure of being on and social and the knowledge that at the end of it, we're going to need a few days to recover. So that is what I want to explore today. How can we rethink community? How can you define community so that it feels supportive and nourishing and it's something that fills you up instead of something that feels like obligation, like a should, or something that's going to wear you out? And even if you're someone who loves all the people and wants to be surrounded by people, I hope this is going to be helpful and valuable and that you'll still take the opportunity to define community for yourself and get really clear on what you want for yourself that way. So yes, I wanted to start with the simple acknowledgement that community is wonderful. And yes, humans are very social animals. We have a very strong primal urge to belong to be a part of the group, to fit in, right? All the things. And I want to pause for a second with this conversation and let us all figure out what we want community to look like, what we can create for ourselves, 
whether we're in the midst of a season of life that demands certain things out of us, either time or energy or resource wise, maybe depending on personality or preferences, maybe depending on geography, right? All kinds of things. This is one of those let's question all of it kind of topics. Let's challenge our proverbial status quo. Let's let go of what we've come to believe community is and actually create what we want community to be. So here's some ideas of people who are in your community that you don't perhaps, maybe, probably consider to be part of your community. You ready? I made a whole list. How about the person who delivers your mail, your Amazon packages, your local FedEx driver, your trash service, the people who work at the nearby power plant and water sanitation facility, the ones who keep your internet going, the people who keep your cell phone towers functioning? How about the people who put something into planting, growing, harvesting, shipping, baking, slicing, packaging, stocking, ringing up all the food that you buy? How about the barista you see a few times a week? Or the chef who works at your favorite restaurant where you get takeout a few times a month? How about the people who work at the lunchroom in your kid's school cafeteria? What about the people who keep traffic lights operational? The ones who work at your local hospitals and fire stations and police departments? How about the ones who work at the DMV? Oh my goodness, the people who work at the DMV and the post office. Bless their hearts. The people who staff City Hall, the people who know how to tend to gardens so we have something beautiful to look at, the people who work in air traffic control so pilots know what the heck to do. What about the people who move through the world adjacent to you, like the ones on the roads with you or in line next to you, the ones who are dining at the same restaurants and going to the same concerts as you? What about the people who teach and coach and high-five your kids? The neighbors who give your kids Gatorade or pretzels when they need a snack. The ones who ask them about their day and make them feel seen. The ones who ask them to watch their dog while they're out of town, giving your kid a sense of responsibility and a way to make money. What about your favorite authors and poets and journalists who are writing all kinds of amazing things for you to read and learn and enjoy things that make you laugh and cry and things you want to share because, oh my God, someone else gets it. What about the artists who paint and sculpt and take photos and make the world a place we love to move through because we get to see something when we look around? What about the musicians? My goodness, the musicians. On the corners, when you're in the city, busking, making money for you to hear when you're walking down the crowded street. Or the ones putting out new albums. Or the ones that put out albums decades ago that you return to over and over again. What about the athletes and entrepreneurs and thinkers and creators and innovators and dreamers and visionaries who change the world in big and small ways all the time, making the whole experience of life something that you have to step back and go, whoa. What about the politicians and the leaders and the rule breakers and the whistleblowers and the industry disruptors who chart the path? What about the animals that we live with? The ones we see in our daily lives, the ones we watch on TV, the ones we visit in the zoo or when we travel or when we get in the water or when we look up in the sky or when we go out into the woods. I mean, start thinking of it. Your community is huge. And It includes George Washington and Taylor Swift and your third grade teacher and the cashier at your grocery store and Noah Kahn and Mary Oliver and Jonathan Franzen and Jennifer Aniston and fictional characters like Ted Lasso and Carrie Bradshaw and Hermione. And then there's blasts from the past like Kurt Cobain and your childhood dog and also your best friend from college. Community. I remember at some point during the pandemic when we were all kind of languishing, we were starting to feel that really particular brand of malaise that came after months of being cooped up, having this aha moment that our communities were in full force, that they were thriving, that we were surrounded by amazing people, and that we were in other people's communities, that we were kind of amazing too. 
that we were all still working together and coming together and in concert with each other, even though it looked different than it ever had before. Different, hopefully, (laughs) than it ever would again, honestly. But it was because of this, because of the idea that I was connecting with people on Zoom and having things delivered and working in and moving through the world in way different ways than ever before. And so was everyone else. Our communities had shifted, but we were still here. We were still doing it. We were still together. It just looked different. I think back to friends I've had during different stages of life, right? High school, my first job, when I lived in a certain neighborhood, and how those relationships look different. Or let's be honest, in a lot of cases, they have just ceased to exist at all in any way that we think of when we think of a relationship. Because there are plenty of people that are in our lives for a season or a time. And then for one reason or another, mostly, really, just out of sheer convenience and geography, they drift out of our lives. And we drift out of theirs. And nothing bad happened. Nothing ended. There was no like, this is over moment. Just change, right? But how those people are still with us and that we're with those people in those same ways. Community, right? So there's some ideas. Now, I want to zoom way out again so that we can zoom in in a different place in a different way. So we just did some brainstorming, right? Maybe I have you thinking in some new ways about belonging and connection and community and who the people are in your community and the communities that you're a part of by sheer virtue of just being alive and on the planet right now, right? The neighborhood you live in, the work you do, your extended family, your friend circles, your kids and their activities and people, all of it. So... All right, let's zoom in again together. But I'm curious now to focus in on what you think community looks like. Like what beliefs you have around it and what you're gripping onto. Remember what we talked about last week and how that is or isn't serving you. For me, I know I gripped onto the idea of certain friends and I would try to quantify this, like how many friends. How many times do we get together? Do we do so-called important things together? Like, does it count? I've been known to get really caught up in this. And I hear similar things from my students when they talk about seeing people's vacations or get-togethers on social media, right? They do these funky compare and despair spirals in their minds. Or when they hear about a party and then maybe they start second-guessing their own plans. Did they get invited? Should they have a party of their own? What does their party look like? Right? Another rabbit hole to go down that sucks. Family. This is a certain circle of hell for sure. Extended family, vacations, holidays, how much everyone gets along, you name it. Or here's another gem. When there are groups or associations, organizations, like even work can fit into this one, right? Who is nominated? or voted in, or chosen, or promoted to lead? Like who's in the in group? Is it an exclusive thing? Is it a C and B scene kind of venture? PTAs, HOAs, boards, you name it, right? Professional groups are another thing this way, like titles, status, perceived power or importance, We have a lot of ideas about it, and it molds our communities, right? Our social groups, our families, how we see other people. And, and, we have the idea of what we think community should be based on media. Like, what do we see on TV and in movies? What do we see in ads and in our social media feeds? And what is assumed by marketers and advertisers when they're targeting us and showing us by telling us how we should be living our lives? So many expectations that we don't want 
and don't even have of ourselves, but they're foisted on us by the culture that we live in. And we rarely, if ever, stop to look at them, let alone question them. We kind of just accept them like we accept the air we breathe. Like, well, this just is what it is. So today with this conversation, I want you to consider it for yourself. What does community look like for you? Who do you want in your community? What works for you? I think about this a lot, like almost week to week, honestly. What do I need? Who do I want? Who do I want to show up for and support and connect with? Who do I want to let them know, hey, I'm really grateful for you? Who do I want to reconnect with? Who do I want to let go of? What do I want to create more of in my community or less of? Where do I walk away feeling lighter and seen and understood and loved? Like just good all around. And where do I walk away feeling tired? depleted, confused, disassociated, like I'm having to hustle or prove something about myself, just kind of icky all around. What brings me closer to me? Who do I see that I feel like, oh yeah, I totally get you. So all of these are good litmus test kinds of questions to kind of sift through what's working, what's not working, what do I need to do differently? Now, this isn't a good or bad question, right? There's no hierarchy of goodness here. That's not what we're testing. Your community isn't made up of only, quote unquote, good people, and you're looking to chuck out the bad apples. It's not that. It's asking, what's working in my life right now? What's not? Why? Do I need to make any changes? Do I want to make any changes? Sometimes it's simply a matter of changing perspective, how you're thinking about a certain person or group or community. Like I love thinking about everyone I interact with and many people I don't interact with as my community. There's some level of we're all in this together, right? We're all on the same ride, the same journey. There's some level of that that comes over me when I see things that way. And as someone who absolutely loves humanity, (laughs) but honestly, I find individual interactions with individual humans a little tricky. This, this belief feels really, really good to me. It feels great. So this conversation is an invitation to think about what that is for you, your community community for you. Like nothing you're at the mercy of, nothing you're guilted into being a part of or obligated to join or stuck sticking around with, right? Just what feels good to you. Yeah? All right. Don't forget, let me hear from you. You can contact me via Featured Up. So just go to featuredup.com slash transforming anxiety And get this, you can now leave audio messages. Folks, I've been waiting for this. This is exactly why I wanted this feature. You can leave me voicemails and I can listen to them and I can even play them back on the podcast. So pretty please visit me at featuredup.com slash transforming anxiety and talk to me. I'm so excited. So fun. All right. I will see you at the same time, same place next week for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Thank you so much for being here, for listening, for doing this work alongside me. Thank you for sharing this with your friends and your family, anyone who, you know, could use the support and the guidance who could use these teachings and practices. Thank you for sharing your stories with me, telling me about your experiences and asking your questions. I'm here with you. Let's do this together. Transforming anxiety.